Hello and welcome. Today I'm very excited because we're going to be taking a look at some new brushes. So these are red squirrel hair brushes. I've had quite a few requests from several different people about featuring more red squirrel hair brushes on my channel and what my thoughts are on the hair type. So we're going to go through these. I actually did not have very many red squirrel hair brushes prior to this. We're going to talk about red squirrel hair and the category and these brushes in particular. Now, first I'd like to give a big thank you to Food Eye Beauty. I purchased this one from them and then these two they actually gift it to me so these are new and these actually they're really special because these are the first brushes I have with bamboo handles so we're going to talk about that and the handles the different types and both of these brushes come in both of these handle types so let's go ahead and get started now, for those of you who are new to Fude makeup brushes, these are brushes that are handmade. And what that means is you're gonna end up with hairs that are never cut. So they take the hair and instead of cutting it to get a particular shape, you know, bundling it all together and cutting it like many do with synthetic brushes, what happens here is they hand place them. So you are getting the shape by an artisan placing the hairs by hand to get that particular shape and then they are bundled. So this is a, a handmade process. It's a very, you know, traditional technique and it results in my opinion in a superior brush because again, our tips are not cut. And if you think about your own hair, as soon as you cut it, you know, you can think about like those Pantene commercials, you've got your hair shaft or your hair fiber here. And if you cut it, you now have a blunt tip. And when you feel that on your skin, it feels a little rougher, okay? Because you have kind of that straight edge there. Whereas a natural hair, if you take your own hair and you look at the ends, you can see that it tapers naturally. And that, that taper is what gives you that softer glide on your skin as well. So that's one thing that will determine softness of a brush. And in my opinion, that's one of your biggest differences between a lot of synthetic brushes and natural hair brushes. That being said, synthetic brushes are getting better at mimicking natural hair now as you know we have progressed. However, in my opinion, they're still nowhere close, especially to brushes like these. These are brushes not really for the uh, novice food a brush collector. In this case, these are going to be incredibly soft and pretty rare. So uh, these are definitely going to be for, it, it's not a beginner brush. This is not something you'd want to gift to a random teenager in my opinion. So let's talk a little bit about what makes these very special. When we're looking at natural hair brushes, there are a variety of different hair types that you can get. Most commonly, we see goat hair, and that is a really great kind of everyday, all-purpose kind of hair. You can use it for the most part with liquids, creams, powders, pretty much anything you wanna use it with. You can use it wet and dry and so forth. But squirrel hair is going to be another level. So it's gonna be even softer, and the hairs are, are more delicate. You can see just looking at them, that they are very, very fine. And that being the case here, you actually don't wanna use these with any liquids or creams. Now, if you happened to use it with a liquid or cream, what you'd wanna do is kind of wash it right away because what happens, because these are such thin, fine hairs, when your liquid or cream dries on there, or even if it's just like a heavier product, it can weigh it down and cause breakage of the hair strand, but even if it's not too heavy, if it dries, then you have that kind of caked on product. When you go to wash it, then eventually, you know, you're going to end up causing breakage. It could just break off right then and there, or it could be a matter of time. So you definitely only want to use these with powder products. And honestly, if you have very oily skin, or let's say you like to put powder on while your face is still damp, these probably aren't the best for you. Now that's not to say you shouldn't use a brush like this with setting powder. I actually do really like to use this brush with setting powder is my favorite purpose for this, but I do give my face like a minute or so to just kind of set the foundation to set before I go in with the powder. So let's take a look at these and then we'll talk a little bit more about them. So this one here is going to be the AC28 in the AKA series from Fude Beauty and this is going to be in your red gradient handle. So this is kind of your traditional size 
For reference, here's a Sonia G handle. So you can see the size difference here. Our handle for the Sonia G is a little bit taller with the ferrule. And here is a Chickahoto brush. You can see that our brush handle is almost the same. So it's kind of your traditional length for most Food A brands. And this brush here has a round ferrule. We'll go about the details when we take a look at some demos. But I just wanted to give you a quick look at this one here. This has already been washed a couple of times. I've been using this for a while now. And you can see that it is incredibly soft. Look at that swirly motion. Next, we have this brush here, and this is from Tansado as well, but this is gonna be with a bamboo handle. So you can see this one here is going to be our regular bamboo. You can see the striations in the handle. We have a black base here, a bakatsu base, and this is going to be our take brush. So this is going to be our AQ20, and the AQ20, the way Tansado does their brushes, you know, the AQ20, AQ17, which I'll show you in a second. These brush heads you can find, you know, in other brushes as well. You can find them in other brush hairs like gray squirrel and so forth as well. So the AQ20 is kind of your identification for this particular size and shape of the brush head. So this one here is very soft as well, but you can see we have a pinched ferrule. So this is gonna be best in kind of a back and forth motion. You have kind of an angled tip here. Again, this has been washed a few times as well, but you can see that we have kind of this angle. So you can actually use this if you wanted to for highlight or to get into some targeted areas. So we'll look at that in a minute. And then we have a smaller version here. So this here is the AQ17. And this is going to be an Arshina Take. So this is a decorated bamboo. Again, we have our black Bikatsu base. And you can see this natural design here in the bamboo. And this is essentially just a smaller version. This is kind of more of your blush brush. And again, because we do have a pinched ferrule and similar shape and size, well, smaller version of the AQ20, we are looking at a back and forth motion being best but again, because of that angle, and I think this one does a better job than the AQ20 because it's smaller, but this can also be used for highlight. So let's start off with the AC28. And again, this is in the AKA series, which is exclusive to Fude Beauty. And we do have this beautiful red squirrel hair, but you can also find, you know, this same brush in other types of hair as well. This one retails for $266. So it is definitely a high high priced brush is very luxe. And again, as I mentioned, the red squirrel hair is very rare and it's very soft and very fragile. Now, if you have squirrel hair brushes, you're probably pretty familiar with blue or gray squirrel, which are all, almost the same. There's not a huge difference between them. Red squirrel, again, is gonna be incredibly soft. This is just a little bit finer than the other squirrel hairs. So it's a little bit more rare and a little bit more fragile and just a, it's a little bit finer. So it will feel just slightly softer on the skin. Now in terms of softness, the red squirrel hair is often compared to fox hair. And fox hair, you do have some that are gonna be thicker than others, some that are more fine. But if you're looking at the softest, you know, fox hair and the softest red squirrel hair, they're kind of in a battle to be, you know, to which one is softer than the other. So they're pretty, pretty close. And I would say, you know, out of the ones I have, I would say that the red squirrel hair is slightly softer than the fox hair brushes that I have. However, they do sell some that are at a much higher price point that I do not have. So I cannot say how those compare to that. Now, as for the AC28, AKA, uh, again, this retails for 266 US dollars. I purchased mine from Food Aid Beauty. It has a brush length of 170 millimeters, 45 millimeter bristle length, and the ferrule width is 20 millimeters. We have a round ferrule. Now I have to say, round ferrules are some, I love round ferrule brushes, particularly for powder brushes, because I love to be able to do a loose, dusting of powder kind of all over with a light swirly motion. And that is going to be my favorite 
method of application with this particular brush. Now, this is something, you know, if you like larger blush brushes, this is definitely something you could use with blush as well, especially if you like that swirly motion. For me, it is a little bit large for brush, for blush, but it definitely can be used that way. Now, the other brush types here, the AQ20 and the Take handle, so this would be our, you know, more plain bamboo. This one retails for 157 US dollars. And it comes in the Take or the Sheena Take handle. So you could have either of the handles. We have a 210 millimeter brush length, 40 millimeter bristle length. And we do have that flat round shape. And again, we do have a little bit of a pointed tip there, which I think makes it a bit more versatile. The AQ17 is our smaller blush brush here, and that retails for 109 US dollars. And I have it in the Sheena Take, but it's also available in the Take. And that one has a brush length of 205 millimeters. So it's five millimeters shorter than the AQ20. And our bristle length is also 35 millimeters. So again, they're five millimeters shorter than the uh, AQ20. And we do have a flat round shape and it's essentially just a smaller version of the AQ20. So these brushes here were actually inspired by a traditional Japanese shodo or calligraphy brush. This information is coming from Fude Beauty here. This elegant new collection by Tanseido features elongated bamboo or take handles and bl a black bikatsu base. Features the red squirrel hair, which again is going to be very rare. It's very soft and fragile. So when you do wash this, and this is not a brush that you need to wash all the time, you know, you want to, kind of clean it in between uses just by gently rubbing it on a you know a microfiber cloth not something that's going to be too rough you definitely want to be gentle with it you could even do a dry cleaning technique where you take you know just kind of plain loose powder and you kind of clean the bristles on that and kind of dust off the powder and that will really kind of prolong your use before you need to wash it but when you do wash it you just want to be gentle that's it you can still wash it the way that you would wash other brushes just be gentle no aggressive scrubbing or anything like that and uh yeah you know definitely make sure just like with your other brushes you're not getting water in the ferrule and you know, just treat it gently and it will last you a long time. So these can be a good investment in that sense. You know, we know brush prices are always going up. Hairs get a little bit harder to find. And as we've seen with some other brushes, you know, the quality of, quality of the hair has kind of decreased as, you know, time has progressed. So hairs from like the 1970s and so forth were typically softer and a little bit more more delicate than what we have nowadays in the same grades. So just like everything else in the world, but that can definitely make brushes like this a nice investment at this time. So let's talk a little bit about these demos here. And I wanted to show you, since red squirrel hair is so renowned for actually putting on a soft application of highly pigmented products, I wanted to show you a highly pigmented blush. So in this case, I use the Valentino Holiday Blush in Pink is Punk or 302. And so this is a new shade. It's pretty, it's pretty bright. It's highly pigmented. And it is a really nice product to use. But I wanted to show you how each of these blush brushes applied this blush shade. And then I wanted to show you some other brush hairs that you might be a little bit more familiar with and see how those compare in comparison to the red squirrel hair. So first you could really see, you know, how each of these blushes went, the AC28, the AQ20, and the AQ17. And then I left the AQ17's application on and we took a look at some different brush hairs. So first up, we took a look at the Koyoto Yoshiki Monochrome brush. Now, the Yoshiki Monochrome series is a series with these beautiful black gray gradient handles. They do have a silver fox hair collection from this. It's on my wish list. I don't have it at this time, but I definitely would love to try that one. Um, the one that I have, however, is Gray Squirrel. So this will be similar to the Red Squirrel hair, but I can tell just by feeling it, both of them are incredibly soft, but you can feel the difference in the hair type with these. The 
Red Squirrel hair definitely feels a little bit finer, like each hair shaft itself has a smaller diameter than that in the Gray Squirrel. So the Gray Squirrel actually has a little bit more spring to it than the Red Squirrel. The Red Squirrel is definitely gonna be a little bit airier. And I think you can see that in the application that the Gray Squirrel does give a little bit not a huge difference, but a little bit of a heavier application than the Red Squirrel hair. And part of that will be because of the brush size, but also because the hair itself just feels to be a little bit stiffer in general. Super, super soft. Now, I also wanted to take a look at goat hair because that is something that we see. You know, I think most people who have some natural hair brushes have goat hair brushes. So we have a dyed goat hair brush, the Sonia G Cheek Pro. And this is going to be a fairly soft brush. Dyeing the goat hair, it doesn't necessarily always make it softer, but it can a little bit, just like when you dye your own hair. If you've ever dyed your hair, you may have noticed that after you come back, after having it dyed, it feels a little bit more relaxed. It feels a little bit softer. And the same thing can happen with these animal hairs. So, in this case, we are looking at the dyed go goat hair from Sonia G and the Cheek Pro. And you can see, again, we have a little bit of a firmer application. Now this brush itself, the bristles are going to be a shorter bristle length, which makes it a little bit firmer as well. So it's a little bit of a denser brush, which will also increase the application. Unfortunately, I don't have any brushes that are all the same shape. So uh, that was the best I could do. I was trying to kind of keep close to that shape. And then last up, we had the Chikahoto and Beautylish collaboration blush brush, and this is undyed goat hair. It's also gonna be very, very soft. And the undyed goat hair can be used with liquids, creams, and powders. Now, when you feel this compared to the red squirrel hair, you can tell that the fibers are a little bit thicker. They feel uh, they feel a little bit different. They, it's almost like the difference between feeling silk and feeling satin. Silk and satin both can feel very soft, but the silk definitely has a more luxe texture to it than the satin. And that's how I would kind of compare the difference in those hairs. So let's go ahead and take a look at each of these brushes, you know, in comparison with the AQ17. So here's our AQ17. Again, red squirrel hair here. And you can see we have kind of a bit of a pointed shape here. It does have a little bit of a flat edge. This is our Yoshiki monochrome brush. This is the cheek brush in gray squirrel. So you can see, you know, the shape is similar, but not the same. We can, we've got a flatter edge here and a little bit more of a gradual curve. And the Koyoto brush is going to be a little bit, uh, it's bigger overall but this was kind of a uh, close match. So you can see when I'm using the AQ17, how light and airy this is. Very soft, very light and airy. Look at this. And then the Yoshiki, you can see the spring back on here. And it's very, very soft but you can see that the hairs kind of stay gathered together a little bit more. It's not as airy, it's not as light. And for size difference, here are the two brushes side by side. So you can see the size difference there. Moving on to the Sonia G Cheek Pro. So again, this is going to be dyed goat hair. And you can see this one is going to be a bit, you know, it's wider, it flares out a little bit more. It's a denser brush this. You can see the movement here. See how quickly that snaps back in comparison to the AQ17. So you can see that the application here is going to be pretty different between the, these two brushes. So we're definitely going to get a stronger application with the Sonia G. And then moving on, this is the Chikahoto and Beautylish collaboration cheek brush. And again, we don't have quite the same shape. This is definitely more square. And this one, however, is a bit airier than the Cheek Pro because look at our difference in the bristle length. Having the shorter bristles gives this a little bit more density 
it would be the same as like cutting this part off there. And you can see this will be a little bit area, but it's definitely not going to be as soft and airy as this one. You can see the difference in the kickback. Let's take a look at some other comparisons. See if you have anything like this in your collection so you can get an idea of how these would fit into your collection. So first up, I want to take a look at the Sonia G Inoshigo Pro brush. And you can see here that our brush head shapes, they're not the same, but they do both have a round ferrule. This one here, the AC28, is gonna be a little bit thicker in diameter. So our diameter is a little bit bigger. And you can see we have more of a rounded top, whereas this one is a little bit flatter on the top. And this one here is going to be die goat. Look at that snapback. So this one has a bit more density. The bristles here are firmer. This one will give a bit more of a buffing action versus our AC28. Look at how this flows and the airiness in this. I mean, it's like, it's incredible. So again, I think this is best for putting powder on your skin and it's going to give you a very light dusting. So really, really beautiful brush. I also wanted to compare it to this. This is the Chikahoto KZ3. So this is their cheek highlight brush. This is Kazan Squirrel, which is probably my favorite hair type. It's incredible. This series, oh, I love this series. You can see it's incredibly soft. This will not be quite as airy. Between the two of these, the Kazan Squirrel feels like the hair fibers are just a little bit thicker than those in the Red Squirrel here. They're both incredibly soft and very luxe. Both of these are very rare hair types. Now as for the shape, you can see that this one here is gonna be more pointed. This is our KZ3, whereas the AC28 is gonna be more rounded. As for the diameter, they're going to be about the same. And you can see our brush height, the Tan Sado is just a little bit taller, but our brush head is about the same. So those are my closest comparisons to the AC28. For the AC28, my thoughts on that, I would have to say, I think is incredibly luxurious brush. This is, you know, incredible to have. It's very soft. Again, you could use it for blush or bronzer or anything on the face really, but I like it best for setting powder or finishing powder, anything you want a really light dusting of. Personally, I find with setting powder, less is more with that, so you don't get any sort of like powdery or cakey finish. And this brush does an excellent job of kind of preventing anything like that from occurring. Now, here's the AQ20, and this is the Koyoro Yoshiki monochrome brush. We looked at it with the AQ17 before, but just to show you the brush head size, you can see that the AQ20 is going to be a bit longer, but our width is about the same if we're going this way. And then the depth here, the uh, Koyoto is a little bit thicker. So here's the Koyoto versus our AQ20. And again, this is gonna be an airier brush. So I wanted to compare it to this one here from Chikahoto. This is the Zen series. This is their highlight brush. And you can see that this brush, the bristle length is a little bit shorter here in the Chikahoto. And this is gonna, it's got an oval ferrule, but you can see it's not really pinched like the Tansado. So this will kind of stay gathered together a little bit more. We don't have anything like flaring out as much. Uh, and overall, this is gonna be a little bit wider here, but this is fox hair. And this one here, I do wanna say that the hairs here feel a little bit thicker than those in the Tansado brush. So it it's partly the way that this is going to be gathered. This will give you a little bit of a thicker, more dense application. Again, it's still gonna be a very soft application, but more dense than the Tansado. Um, and that's partly because of the way this is bundled, 
but also the hairs are, these have a little bit more spring to them. The silver fox hair is very soft, and very delicate, but it does have a little bit more spring than the squirrel hair, which is just a little bit softer and a little bit more lax in that sense. So this would, again, be the Zen series, the highlight brush. Another one I want to look at, this is from the Chikahoto Chocolat series last year. I think this was holiday last year. And this is Pine Squirrel. And Pine Squirrel is gonna be a bit more resilient. You can see that this is gonna be firmer. It's not as soft as Gray Squirrel, Blue Squirrel, Red Squirrel, <laughs> KZ Squirrel. Uh, so you can see we definitely have a firmer brush. This is still soft, but it's definitely not nearly as soft as this. But just so you can compare the shape here, you can see this is gonna be a bit flatter on the top. And again, we have more of that oval ferrule. It's gonna be a little bit wider. Now here, AQ20, AQ17. This is the number eight series, which I believe is made by Hakuhoto. This is the face brush in number nine. And I wanted to kind of put this one here in the middle so you could see how it compares size and shape wise. So this is actually gonna be a mix here of goat and squirrel. It is a nice brush, but it is gonna be firmer. You can see we've got quite a bit of snap here compared to these. but you can see that our shape, it's fairly similar. The shape is fairly similar, but this is going to be much denser. You can see it's gonna be a little bit thicker as well than these Tansado brushes. So I just wanted to show you kind of a comparison. Again, here's AQ17, and this is the number eight, nine brush. And number eight is our, our brand here. And just a couple more comparisons here. So this one also has more of an oval ferrule. We have a little bit of a pinch here. This is the Sonia G Designer Pro. You can see it's much smaller than the AQ20. Let's take a look with the AQ17. You can see our brush shape. It does have a similarity, but the Sonia G is gonna be a little bit more rounded, whereas this has a bit more of an angle. You can see we have more of an angle going up and then a flat top. And this one here is going to be more rounded overall. Now, the Sonia G is gonna be thicker. Our brush head size is similar, but the Tansado is ever so slightly longer. And you can see our airiness here. You can see how much more dense the Sonia G is. Part of that is due to our, our thickness. Part of it is going to be due to the resiliency of these fibers. You can see how those snap back versus these. And last up, the Suku Squirrel Hairbrush. So this is gray squirrel or blue squirrel. And uh, this one here, these are not made by Suku anymore. But if you're looking for something like this, take a look at the Kairado Kiwami series. They are essentially the same brushes. Those were, that, that is the maker actually for the Suku brushes. Suku's brushes now are synthetic. So here is the brush head with the AQ17. You can see that they do have a similar shape. We have a slightly stronger angle on the Tansado, but it's close. And you can see our flat top is a little bit longer on the Suku. Brush head size though is pretty similar until we go to our thickness here. And you can see that the Suku is, I would say, close to three times as thick because again, we have more of that oval ferrule versus the pinch. So this is gonna be compressed uh, quite a bit more. So you can see again here versus this. Honestly, this is incredibly soft. If you had the exact same brush shape with this hair type, there wouldn't be too much of a difference. Now I've already given you my thoughts on the AC28. I think is a great powder brush. I really love, I love having something with a round ferrule with a swirly motion. A lot of the ones that I have are a little bit too dense, you know, for all of the applications. I love having something this airy that really will just put on a minimal amount of setting powder. It kind of gets it just right. 
And then moving on to these, I do like both handle types, both the Take and the Sheena Take. I think they're both really unique. I like being able to see both types here. And this brush type, you know, I would have to say between the two of these, I think the AQ17 is probably one that would get more use from most people because it works fantastically as a blush brush. Now, as for the AQ20, I think it depends what kind of powder you like to use because I think this is best for a setting powder as well, but this works best for a target application, whereas the AC28 is great for an all over dusting, but this works great for, you know, just a target application under the eyes or on the cheeks. If you're somebody who gets the oily T-zone, just applying it in those areas is really great. It also works great for a larger blush swatch or swath <laughs> of color, um, but it's really gonna depend what you already have in your collection. So I do feel like the AQ17 is probably a bit more versatile because it is closer to a traditional blush size. So if you're looking to kind of press in a light dusting of setting powder or finishing powder, or you want a larger brush, the AQ20 is great for that. Um, by the way, bamboo, as we know, is incredibly light. So I did wanna mention that these are going to be very light handles. So that's definitely something to take into account when you're purchasing a brush. Some people prefer a heavier handle and a very light brush head, and other people prefer it the other way around. So this one here, the AC28, our handle is heavier than the brush head, whereas the Take and Sheena Take brushes, we have very lightweight handles, but the brush head's gonna be heavier. So just something to know. I think it's really interesting, but honestly, you get really used to both ways pretty quickly. So another thing I like is how long these are because when I put them in my holders with other brushes, they stand out. So it's definitely a plus. And just one more thing I'd like to mention, you can find this actually on Food Aid Beauty's websites in their FAQ. I'll leave that linked down below in the description box, but they specifically state that the hairs for the brushes are byproducts of other industries. So the animals are not being killed specifically for brushes. They are killed for other purposes and then their hair is used for brushes. So I just wanted to clarify that. I know it's always hard to find you know, information about that or actual, you know, it, sometimes the information you get seems very ambivalent. I felt like this was very clear. So I definitely wanted to share that with you in case that was a question that you had. And again, I'll leave everything linked down below in the description box. Thank you so much to Food Aid Beauty for gifting me these brushes here. And I have to say, I'm really happy with all three of these. It's such, it's such an honor to have brushes made like this. You know, think about the amount of time, the energy, the quality of these products. And, you know, I'm just always in awe. So, Thank you so much for tuning in. I'd love to know what you'd like to see next in terms of brushes. Let me know down below in the comments and let me know if you've tried any of these. I'd love to know your thoughts. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a great day.